No trip to the popular tourist area of Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, Tennessee could be complete without spending a day at Dollywood. Even though we experienced a lot of cool things on our trip to Tennessee, as theme park enthusiasts, this was what we were looking forward to the most. I had been to Dollywood once with my parents as a young child, and Jack had never been at all. We were really thankful to have Jack's brother, who has lived in Tennessee for a few years, along with us as he is an annual pass holder at Dollywood and knew his way around the park. Dollywood is themed to celebrate life in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, which of course is where Dolly Parton was born. This visit was in early July 2021 and the park was pretty busy. Parking is $20 and once you are in, you can turn one direction to head to Dollywood's Splash Country Water Park, which we did not visit on this trip, or you turn the other direction to head toward the main Dollywood theme park. Single day passes at the time we post this video in August 2021 are $84, though you can add a water park visit for the same day for an additional $10. Now on to the first ride of the day the tram to the front gate. Once in the front gate, you enter on Show Street. The main attraction here is the Show Street Palace Theater, where Dollywood's award-winning Southern Gospel Quartet performs. They had the day off when we were there on a Thursday, however. Show Street also has some shops and dining options as well. We continued around the corner to Jukebox Junction, a 1950s themed area. We would eat lunch here later in the day at Red's Drive-In, a quick service restaurant serving burgers, fries, and milkshakes. There were plenty of other dining options in the park, of course, like this, and this, and this, and Aunt Granny's, a southern comfort food buffet restaurant that USA Today named one of the 10 best theme park restaurants in the United States. But we needed to be back at Jukebox Junction for a show right after lunch, so burgers at the drive-in it was. The food was okay, and it was nice to find a charging station near our seats as well. The Jukebox Junction section has two main rides. The first is a roller coaster called Lightning Rod. This ride is regularly listed among the top 10 roller coasters in the United States. It launches riders from 0 to 45 miles per hour up its 20-story lift hill, and that's just the beginning. Next to Lightning Rod is Rockin' Roadway, a fun ride for the whole family, where kids of all ages can drive replicas of cars from the 1950s while listening to music from that same era. The other attraction in Jukebox Junction is that show we mentioned earlier. After eating lunch at the diner, we headed to Pines Theater for a show called Dreamland Drive-In. The show begins with a man visiting a rundown drive-in where he spent his youth. And then we are transported to his past to see him and his friends sing and dance to the hits of the 1950s and 60s. The show lasts almost an hour, but it is really well done, and it's a great chance to relax in the air conditioning on a hot day at the park. You will especially love this show if you are into music from the 50s and 60s. It was before our time, but we still recognized most of the songs and had a great time. The next section of the park we visited was the Country Fair. This area featured a lot of different family rides. There was this really tame, bouncy version of a drop ride called the Shooting Star. There's the ride called the Sky Rider, which soars 70 feet above the ground and also this more traditional version of a theme park swings ride. There's a version of our favorite flat ride, the Scrambler. There were a bunch of kiddie flat rides where kids could ride in a circle on ducks and bees and pigs and of course, flying elephants. They also have the most sad teacup ride that we've ever seen. I usually can't do the teacup rides at theme parks because they cause me to get motion sickness, but I probably could have done this one. This video is not slowed down. We sat there watching it for several minutes, and this seems to be its regular speed. They have bumper cars, which I rode. In fact, there I am in the video. Can you see me? Look close, I'm in there.
Here's a ride called the Dizzy Disc. Jack loves riding rides like this. Have I mentioned I get motion sick? We left that area and headed to a section called the Village. The park's carousel is in this section, as is the train station. So we got in line. Well, we waited about 15 minutes and they weren't boarding people on the empty train. That was when we overheard an employee telling another guest that the next train ride wasn't scheduled for another 20 minutes. The day we were there, they were apparently running the train on the hour each hour. This is the only theme park we've been to where the train doesn't just drop off one set of riders, pick up the next set of riders, and start up again. You should also know this train is not a method of transportation to other places in the park, as it usually is at most of the theme parks we've been to. There's only one station. The train leaves the station, makes a 20-minute trip around the mountain that Dollywood is located on, and then returns you right back where you started. We hear it is beautiful, but we just didn't want to spend so much of our one day at Dollywood waiting on a train. We found a nearby bluegrass concert that had just started, featuring the Smoky Mountain String Band. Bluegrass isn't really our jam, but Dollywood has a lot of music performances scheduled on outdoor stages throughout the day, and we wanted to catch at least one of these. The band was very talented, and we enjoyed it. We then hit up my favorite ride in the park, Smoky Mountain River Rampage. I absolutely love these rapids rides. This one is better than the Rapids Ride at Animal Kingdom at Disney World. I would say it's about as good as the Rapids Ride at California Adventure that's at Disneyland, but it's not as much fun as the Popeye-themed Rapids Ride that's at Islands of Adventure at Universal Orlando, which is my favorite version that I've come across so far of these theme park Rapids Rides. I do love all of these rides, but unfortunately for Jack, he does not. These rapids rides and other water rides like log flumes are always fun. I enjoy them. What I don't enjoy is walking around a theme park in soaking wet clothes for the next two hours after you get off these rides. It just isn't worth the fun, in my opinion. But I always end up on them anyway. Happy wife, happy life, and all that. Indeed. We then passed a farm-themed area that has a kid's play area but the big attraction here is the Barnstormer, the park's version of extreme swings, which are located behind a barn facade. After a bit of a walk, we pass the grist mill where they sell Dollywood's world famous cinnamon bread. Everything we read and everyone we talked to said we had to try this cinnamon bread. It's so popular that it even has its own line of merchandise but we didn't get to try it. We weren't hungry when we walked by, and then we never walked by that area again, and we were too tired late in the day to walk back through the park just to try it. So buying cinnamon bread is on our to-do list the next time we visit. And while we're on the subject of snacking at Dollywood, we'll give a special shout out to Dippin' Dots, because there are six different kiosks at Dollywood selling Dippin' Dots, which you may remember as the ice cream of the future of the past. The grist mill is the entrance to the Craftsman's Valley section of the park, designed to preserve the history of craftsmen in the Smoky Mountains. The first thing we checked out was the Robert F. Thomas Chapel. This is named after Dr. Thomas, who was both the doctor who delivered Dolly Parton when she was born. Not only was he a medical doctor, but he was also a traveling preacher. This chapel holds a Sunday church service on any week when Dollywood is open. And now is probably a good time to mention that you shouldn't plan a trip to Dollywood in January or February as the park is closed from New Year's until sometime in March. We would definitely check this out if we were ever at Dollywood on a Sunday, but we usually try to avoid theme parks on weekends because that's when the crowds are at their largest. Next in the Craftsman Valley section of the park is Daredevil Falls, another chance to get uncomfortably moist. Near that is the Eagle Mountain Sanctuary. This is the world's largest exhibit of non-releasable American bald eagles, which have been deemed unreleasable by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, as they would not be able to survive in the wilderness due to injuries they have experienced. We spotted at least a dozen of these eagles behind a net on the side of the mountain, 
most of them were too far away to get good pictures. They did have a couple in an enclosure where you could see them up close. And they also had a show called Wings of America, which featured the eagles and other birds of prey. Next up was the only roller coaster that I could talk Alice onto. Blazing Fury is a dark ride that turns into a somewhat tame roller coaster. It's all indoors. The town in the dark ride portion of the attraction catches fire, and then firefighters have to put it out. But the bridge has already burned down, causing you to go down three roller coaster drops of only about 20 feet or less each before the ride ends. The animatronics and sets here are old looking, as this was built in 1978, back before the park was even called Dollywood. But this is a fun little ride, it's not too intense, so most family members should enjoy it. There's also an old schoolhouse in the area, complete with the list of rules for teachers that wouldn't fly today. The Craftsman Valley area ends with one more thrill ride, the Tennessee Tornado, which is themed to a twister sweeping through an old Tennessee mining company. This triple spiral looping coaster nears 70 miles per hour and features a 128 foot drop. You round the corner from there into the Wilderness Pass section, which features another coaster themed to honoring firefighters. This one is called Fire Chaser Express. This dual launch family coaster sends you through the track going both forward and backward. And a short walk later, you're at the next thrill ride, a winged coaster that takes riders 21 stories above Dollywood and feels like you're soaring through the air. Neither of us rode this one, so we couldn't get any up-close footage, but here's a better picture from the website that should give you an idea of this experience. Next, we passed the plaza at Wilderness Pass. Added in 2018, this relaxation area has fountains, picnic tables, and rocking chairs where you can sit for a spell in the shade. Then it was on to another thrill ride, the Mystery Mine, a steel coaster that travels through an abandoned mine. There's a creepy vulture here to warn you against going in, and I decided to follow the vulture's suggestion. There was also a classic theme park drop ride called Drop Line, and a roller coaster that we never even made it to as we were running out of time called Thunderhead. As our day was winding down, we wanted to end up in the newest section of the park, Wildwood Grove, as that section is the best location to see the state-of-the-art nighttime show that closed the park each day during the summer. Wildwood Grove opened in 2019, and it's themed to a magical hidden land under the limbs of the great wildwood tree, or something like that. This is a great section for families, but there are several rides here that adults would probably enjoy just as much as the kids. The attractions here include Treetop Tower, The Great Tree Swing, Black Bear Trail, a ride system that Disney should totally steal to make a Mary Poppins ride where horses come off the carousel and ride through town. Frogs and Fireflies. The Mad Mockingbird. And a fun, twisty hanging coaster called the Dragon Flyer. There's also an indoor play area for kids. Our next video will talk about their new nighttime show that was featured all summer, as well as an on-site museum at Dollywood that shows a lot of interesting artifacts from Dolly Parton's career. So please click the subscribe button and the notification bell so YouTube will alert you when we continue our discussion about Dollywood. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Check out these other videos from our trip to Tennessee at the end of this video, and we'll see you the next time we're traveling through.